Hi, this is Paul Solt from iPhone Dev TV, and I want to continue with the view controller example. So we don't have a way right now to make the view controller disappear, and so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to add a button so that we can jump back. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is drag out a button. This is going to be our done button. Now, since I'm not working with a navigation controller, I'm not going to have that nav bar at the top. So I'll just put done here, and we'll work with that for now. Once that is up there, we can connect this to our code. So I'm going to hold the option key, and I can click on my view controller.m. That'll put me into the assistant editor, and it's going to open up that code file. Now from here, we need to get some screen space because it's really tight on this small screen. So I am going to be in my viewcontroller.m file, and I'm just going to right click and drag into the implementation block. And down in here, we can just say done button pressed. And we can do something. Now what we're gonna need to do here in order to pass information back to our normal view controller, so we're in my view controller, we want to go back to the view controller class and we want to make this disappear. We'll need to use the delegate pattern to make that happen. So I'm going to switch over to our .h file. Now that we have this connection, I can go back to the single view. And again, we'll go back to our .h file. And in here, we're going to have to create two new things. We're going to create a delegate protocol and we are going to create a delegate property. So the first thing we need to do is create the delegate protocol. So the format is going to be protocol and then the name. So by convention, we use the name of the class as our starting point. And then depending on what it is, you can just write delegate. If it's something more specific, you can always be more specific. The next thing we want to do is have some kind of function that's going to return. And right now we don't care about returning a value, but we do want to say that this view controller, that the done button was pressed. And we'll try and use a, a verb like did close or is done or is finished. We want to make sure it's very specific what's happening, but we also want to include who is doing the action. And so we will say my view controller to give us the who in this situation and in this case, I'm probably going to go did and then finish. And then after that, I do a colon and we're going to pass a copy of the view controller to whoever is going to respond to this message so that if there's multiple controllers, you can differentiate between which one is finishing. And so here I'm just going to put my view controller. So the, the class that is calling this most likely has a reference to it. But by putting the reference to the exact My View Controller, if you have two different screens called My View Controller, you will be able to determine which one is finished so that you can do the appropriate action. Now, we have an issue here, and you can see it's highlighted right here, and if I click on it, it's expecting a type. Now, our class is actually declared down here, and so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to do a forward declaration. And this is important because the compiler or Xcode does not know about this class yet because it's defined lower down. So we're going to actually have to do the at class keyword and then type my view controller. Now this is going to say, okay, there's going to be a class that's called this, but I'm not providing the implementation or the whole interface yet. I'm just letting you know it exists. And so what happens is this will match with this one and as long as it can find the .m file with the actual implementation and all the, the supporting methods in there, your code will work. And so that is the first step. So we've created a protocol that we can call, and this is going to happen when it finishes. The next step is we want to create a new property for the MyViewController, and this is going to be a weak type because we don't want to store a reference to the other controller that's going to be responding to this information. Instead, we want a weak type so that it auto zeros or auto nils 
when the other controller goes away. So if that other screen doesn't live throughout the lifetime of the application, we want to make sure that it's cleared on this side so that we don't have any crashes. If you don't use weak, you can run into situations where your code can call something and it doesn't exist anymore and it will cause a crash, which is a bad user experience. So we'll do non-atomic and then we're gonna use the ID type and then we can use the angle brackets to specify a delegate protocol. So we can specify a protocol that it's gonna to conform to. And the reason we do it this way, rather than actually have the view controller class in here. So what's different about this approach is that I have no idea who is going to be this object. There is no hard link to it. And this is a good programming thing because this is reducing coupling in our code. If I had written this a different way, if we had written it as view controller and then delegate, we would have a, a strong reference, which means we would have to import the view controller class. And this isn't good because now this code file, my view controller, we can't just take it out of here and we can't just use it in another class. So it would look like this, but it would be creating these strong ties. And so the nice thing about the protocol is we can just specify, okay, there's one method that some other class has to conform to, which means they have to implement it. And if they do that, then we can pass our information to them. So that's what we're going to do here. I'm going to delete that line of code and we don't need this. So now we're back to where we were. And now what we can do is we can call this method up top. So I'm going to switch over to our .m file. And in here, in when our done bu button is pressed, we are going to require this method to be implemented. Otherwise it will crash if the delegate is set. So here we'll say self.delegate. And just be careful with autocomplete. Self.delegate. And then our method, if we go back, is my view controller did finish. So we'll just say my view controller did finish. And here we're passing an instance. We want to pass ourself here so that the other class can do some special logic if they need to know which screen is actually causing this to happen. So that's what we do here. If we wanted to do a optional method, I'll show you how that works uh, in a little bit after we get this working. So now we have this sort of portion hooked up. The next step is in our view controller, when we create it, we are passing the data array, but we also want to set the delegate. So we'll say my view controller dot delegate is equal to self. So we're passing in our self, which means that we have to conform to that. And you'll notice an issue here. So it's saying we have an incompatible type. And what we do here is near the top, right after this interface view controller, we will add an angle bracket and say we will are going to conform to the my view controller delegate. Once we do that, we'll have another warning. And, and this one's easy to solve. It means that we have not implemented something. So since we set the delegate, and I'll show you what happens, we show the view controller, I hit the done button, and then we crash. So it's a SIG abort right here. Again, always look at the error message because this will help you figure out what the problem is. And here we see unrecognized selector sent to instance, and then we see what the one is. Since this is a required method, you have to implement it in the class that's saying it's going to provide the implementation. Otherwise, it's an error and things will crash. And so what we'll do here is just implement that method. Now you can start just typing my, we should be able to type if I stop it, dash void, my view controller did finish and we just implement it now. So once we do that, we can run it again and hit done and it doesn't crash, but it's not going away. And so now we just need to implement one additional thing in this method and it's just the self dismiss view controller animated. We'll say yes and we don't have a completion block, so we'll just say nil and then we can go ahead, stop this and run it again. We can show the view controller, it pops up from the bottom. And then when we hit the done button, it goes back down and we can keep on doing this. So that is how you create a view controller 
we've added data, we've set up a delegate, we can pass the data in and then we can respond and do stuff. And if there's anything we need to do with the data, we can do that here. So we can always grab the data back from our controller. So if we made a copy, we would be able to get it back and we could just store it here. And I put the brackets there and I don't need them. Okay, so now we can do something with the data. And assuming they change the data, we could print it out and respond or save whatever you need to do when a view controller disappears. So it's up to you to implement that logic, but that is the gist of doing the, the whole connection to create new screens in your iPhone application.